Okay, welcome back. So here we are again, this time we're at Greenford Test Centre. Mm -hmm. Now Greenford Test Centre is a very difficult test centre. Mm. Myself, Scott the driving instructor, joined by... Mike. <laughs> yes, he's in the place, he's got a nice coffee today. Coffee. He's all raring to go. Oh, he's, he's doing a little advertising now. <laughs> ice, ice coffee, flat white, and extra shot. Lovely. I'll have mine a little bit later. Yep. Right, we're not in the test centre. We're very close to the test centre. We're mm -hmm. going to go drive past Greenford Test Centre now and mm -hmm. we're going to be doing a South Harrow route. This will involve a very mm -hmm. complicated double roundabout system and a huge roundabout, Northwick Park Hospital roundabout. You know that mm -hmm. one? Yeah? Absolutely, yeah. So, alright, you ready to go? Rock right, let's do it. Okay, mm -hmm. leaving the car park here or just starting my driving test, doing my six point observations, and off I go. If you're in a manual car, Mike, POM. Yep, carry on. So, uh, POM, not POF. Sorry, what's POF? Are you into that? <laughs> oh, what's POF? Are you into that? <laughs> so you do know what POF is. Right, okay, now we're exiting now. This is very tricky, because it's very hard to see. So I had to really lean forwards there to have a good look at the road. This is Horsenden Lane. This is where the test centre is. Mm. And it's very unlikely, however, 5% of test routes will go over Horsenden Lane Hill and through the width restrictions by the bridge, okay. which we came through on the way here. Mm. And uh, it's very, very narrow. You do get a lot of width restrictions here at Greenford. Yes. And you get a lot of what else do we get, Scott? A lot of what Round else? Roundabouts? Meeting situations? No. Um, What's the main thing? And you should know this. At Greenford? Yes. Hills. Hey! <laughs> He's hit it. He's hit See, the nail on there. You know what it is? After 300 yards. <laughs> you never get the obvious, right? A yeah. I'm right. Hide in plain sight. Yeah. Um, the thing is, since I started doing ma uh, sorry, automatic lessons, mm -hmm. I've forgotten all about hills. Hills aren't really a thing anymore for me. Does your car roll back? It doesn't, no. Because I'll show you here at the top of the hill. Can you take okay? your, right, okay. So you, okay, go on. You know this hill in a manual car. It's first thing, yeah. A lot yeah, of people yeah. can fail here, can't Turn they? Of course. All right? Of course. So it's quite common you'll come this way and like the other way which you mentioned. Yes. Do go on top of these lines here. They're broken lines, so you can position here. It's safe and necessary. I'm gonna purposely stop. If I press, See, it says hold. Yeah, yeah. Right, left, right, and go. And off. It won't roll back. So when I accelerate, mm -hmm. the car will only go forwards. And even without that, it's very likely that the car won't roll back. Mm. If it does, it's very, very minuscule. Yeah. And um, yeah, you're not really. Are you still concerned though? Yards. What if someone's Turn sitting right, right on your backside? Eight forty-one twenty-seven Greenford Road. Yes. Yeah, so when you do have a vehicle that's quite close behind, that's that's a situation where you could get quite nervous, especially yeah. if you're on a driving test. So I would do the hold technology. So you can just give a squeeze there. Obviously, can you talk us through how you would do that in, Turn a, right. in a manual car, please, Mike? <clears throat> it's all based on the pupil, right? Okay. If they got control. So uh, how if would you help someone with mm -hmm. the control hill starts? Handbrake. If you're okay. waiting there a while, get the handbrake on. I do that a lot of the times. If I'm sitting around, handbrake. Neutral, keep it on, you know, keep it in neutral. Get yourself in gear when you're ready to go because otherwise you're killing the clutch. You heard it here from Mike here. <laughs> here you're here, killing here. the clutch. You're killing that clutch. You can smell it sometimes, can't you? Absolutely. Burning the clutch. Absolutely. Burning the clutch. This is what, these are the things you got to explain. It's not just about driving. You don't, you got to look after your car. Yeah, especially you if you gotta drive look a after manual your car. car, yeah? Absolutely. Mm, so People just think. Here, manual car, you got to be a pro. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. So, there's a valid point there. The thing is, a lot of people think about just driving their car, but they're not thinking about maintaining their car. you got to keep a healthy car as well. That's why you got it. That's why they ask you the show and tell that's me. That's what I was just yeah. going to say. Yeah. So yeah. That's the right. point of the show me, tell me question. What's the point you driving a car when uh, you know you don't know how to maintain the car? You don't know the mechanics of a car. You don't understand. You know the Change basics. Oil. Yeah, oil. Yeah, oil. You know, sometimes I'm, I'm going down the road and I point out to my pupil and I always say, "Look at that person. Their door's open. Look at their tire. Their tire's flat." 
and they still drive around and these are experienced drivers here we go back to the experienced drivers <laughs> so um and another thing we're going back to now 20 mm -hmm. is plenty so this is such a common theme all across london and any big city across the uk mm. i believe uh, the councils have adopted the 20 mile an hour policy so why where is, we why is yeah. it sorry sorry to why is it 20 yeah why is it gone 20 everywhere when it originally became 20 mm. my idea was it was because of air pollution that's okay. why i think it's running in all these big cities okay. uh, we've got a speed change here on the, on the right here okay so it's now becoming 30. so that was my understanding apparently the lower the speed the lower the emissions yep so agreed, yeah. i mean yeah, if yeah. anybody knows After any different yards, Turn left, A4, <coughs> also, safety, as Hill. safety aspect was, I think there was a campaign on TV. Uh, if you hit a child at 30, you're going to cause them injury. Hit them at 20, less injury. Yeah, yeah less um, less risk of a fatality. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the injury as well, mm -hmm. right? So you got more time to think, to stop. So well. another yeah. way I can do mm. heel start is there's a P and uh, automatic parking brake here. So if I push that, mm. the red P comes on, then I can release the brake and just wait to push the gas. Right, okay. Okay. Because okay. okay. uh, we've got another hill here. So, yeah, hill starts everywhere around here. Got your hands. Got to be on the wheel, right? <laughs> 10 and 2. Is huh? that correct? Absolutely. 10 and 2 is correct. Whatever you feel. You got control over that wheel? It's fine. I don't recommend you spinning that wheel back, though. Allowing that wheel to correct. Agreed. Yeah, so to auto correct. Um, Feed it back. Mm, no, let's have a little debate on this. Ready for it? Ready for the debate? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Copy, so copy. feeding the wheel back, push pull technique. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, vi uh, vice, not vice. Okay. Vice um, allowing the steering to self correct. Which one? would be quicker. Would feeding the wheel, 10 and two, push-pull technique, be faster After 300 than... yards, turn left, A40, A5, Okay, it's all Oxford based on, Hill. so this is my argument. If you allow the wheel to spin, you may lose control based on speed. So if you did that faster and you allowed the wheel to spin back, some people ha don't have experience. Here we go, that main thing, South experience. Arrow. Turn left. Our, our route here. Yeah, so we're actually just following the road, sat now wrong. Okay, I totally agree with what Mike's saying. He's saying when you allow the wheel to spin itself, mm. like now, okay, it didn't really spin, mm. but you may lose control. Yeah. Okay, agreed. And then going back to uh, the 10 to 2, quarter to 3 position, the reason why, why was that highly stated originally? After you know, 300 for you to follow yards, those rules. Turn right. A3 the 10 and rather, two. Yeah, rather than crossing your hands. Okay, so 10 and 2, why actually, Mike? Yeah, I don't know. What's in the middle of the wheel? The airbag. Right, okay, so if yes. the airbag right. deploys, yes. if your hands are crossed, where's yes. your hands going to go? Uh, in your face, there we go. yeah. Stopping here. The whole way down this hill, I've been holding the brake, by yeah. the way. So we talked about uphills, so we haven't talked about downhills. Hold the brake. So that's why it's been corrected from 10 and 2 to 9 and 3 now because then there's even less chance of your hands going in your face if the airbag deployed. Because mm -hmm. they're parallel. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, your hands mm -hmm. would be out here, the airbag goes out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Right, so, uh, slowing the wheel to spin back could lose control, crossing your arms, could hit your face if the airbag went off, which could be a very serious accident mm -hmm. uh, on top of the accident that would probably cause the airbag to go off. Two very, very, um, valid points there this junction here i just want to talk about i'm gonna to have to wait here to see what this van's going to do because if this van decides to continue that's where i would have to hold my position until it's safe to turn right um, if i just go straight across that junction and the van doesn't stop then i'm going to be impeding on that traffic when turning right and receive a serious fault for mm. uh turning right junctions turning right story i have to tell is a student of mine passed the driving test okay um at the end of the test the mm. examiner asked the student why are you steering with one hand 
oh, because I have experience, was the answer from the student. Mm. So the rebuttal from the examiner was, how much experience do you have? Yeah. A few months, a year? Mm. And the student replied with a few months. Mm. Then the examiner went into one. I yeah. got into an Uber car recently, he said. The Uber driver was steering with one hand. Mm. I asked the Uber driver to pull over and stop and I got out and walked the rest of the way. Mm. That's how pissed off he is about the roundabout people steering and take with the one second hand. Exit. One Eight, second. Three, Use the right Best lane road. on this roundabout. Go slightly on the right circle. Good. Maintain the right lane on the exit because the double roundabout system After here. After 200 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the second exit. A404, so the lady road. is telling me to turn right, second exit, so I'm in the correct lane for turning right, second exit. Early vision, early Go decision. Right on the roundabout and Ooh. take the second early exit. Early vision, early decision, mm -hmm. and round we go. Yep. As soon as I pass the first exit, one, two, interior left, exterior, and signal left to take the second exit. Back to my storytelling. So, next story is, student failed their driving test for steering with one hand. They were so unhappy about failing their driving test at the end of the test, this student actually proceeded to start kicking my car after the actual exam. Excuse me? Never had that before, ever. Kicking your car? Yeah, he was slamming the door, kicking like the wheels. I would have left him there. The examiner failed him for steering with one hand around the last bend coming okay, back. Okay. Okay, because the examiner mentioned that when he was doing his one-handed steering, he lost control of the vehicle mm. and then almost collided with a parked car. I mean, I'm totally on board with the examiner. You're going around a sharp mm. bend steering one hand and you don't have an experience like Mike mentioned. That's it. You're asking for... So he would have passed him, right? Had he had control. Had he had control. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So the now, one that passed got lucky and the other one that didn't didn't have control and failed. Mike, can you talk me through what I'm about to do at Northwood Park Hospital roundabout? Are you taking right the right turn at this roundabout? Yes. And Which exit? The third exit. Third. third exit. Just like you would with an, uh, a conventional roundabout, right? Take a right turn. Okay. The right's clear. Yep. Once so it emerges. Approaching the right lane with yeah. the right signal, look for the gap, and then emerge out into the right lane. Yeah? yeah? Now, yeah, yeah, remember yeah. what happens when we go around this bend? Yeah. Arm check, arm cut, yeah, yeah. Patch. yeah. Yeah. Spirals straight away yeah. into the light patch, mm -hmm. into the center of the roundabout now. But well, what's the main thing you do before you get into that patch? A4 and Check the mirrors. <laughs> My favorite. Check the mirrors. Watch Why is that? Case. Why is that, Scott? Well, because people are surrounding you on roundabouts, aren't Absolutely, they? And you yeah. need to know if it's safe. Any change of direction. Uh -huh. Any change of speed. And you can check your mirrors. Add to that mirror, mirror. Blind spot check. Blind spot check. Mirror, mirror, blind spot check. If you have the experience. And yes, blind spot check yeah? if you've got the experience, yeah? Hence, it's very, very, very important. Once you pass your test, I always recommend highly is do your pass plus. Yes. Do your pass plus. I just had a student, so another story now. Uh -huh, she uh -huh. just passed her uh, test mm -hmm. uh, last week. Mm -hmm. um, she's buying this car. This car? Yep and uh, we did pass plus. On these lessons, there was so much new stuff that came up that we hadn't covered to get to the level of passing the driving test. Mm -hmm. So like Mike said, mm -hmm. your learning doesn't stop once you pass your driving oh, yeah, test. Absolutely. It just never stops, to be honest. I'm still learning. After 300 yards, Has anyone heard that cross the roundabout and take the second what exit. A404, uh, what Mastery, I think, I think a book called Mastery by Robert okay. Greene. Mine's a big reader, by the way, in Sorry. case anybody's wondering. I love reading, love it. You're not a master until you hit 10,000 hours in anything you do in life. Yeah, 10,000 10, hours. <laughs> 10, Cross hours. the roundabout. I think me and Scott hit 10,000 hours in driving. Oh, Would you yeah, say that? For sure. Yeah. But listen, we're still students. Yeah. We're always learning. Mm -hmm. No ego. Yeah, the yeah. teacher and the student creates the learning. Absolutely. Sometimes there's things my students say to After me, and I'm like, "Wow, yards, I never." Yeah, 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 yeah. I never thought Listen, about that. Listen, sometimes you can pick up something from a five-year-old. They'll say something like, "Wow, yeah. I never knew." That. Now, this is important. You mm. need the right lane. You will not be told by your examiner what lane to use. Right. Mm. 
just to follow the road ahead unless road markings or signs direct you otherwise. Absolutely. So I'm looking ahead to see where the straight arrow was to follow the road ahead. Mm. The traffic lights also helped me there because one of them had a green mm. left arrow and one had a straight green arrow. Mm. Now, where's the 20 mile an hour change, Mike? Is it from this 20 on the floor or from that 20 sign on the post? So as soon as you hit the 20 on the floor? I saw the 20 on the floor and I started to slow yeah. down doing 18 miles yeah, an yeah. hour now. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So, a lot of people won't see that speed change and then they'll drive through there at over 20 miles an hour and receive a serious fault. So the speed limits of 20 are very important. They are quite difficult to maintain, especially mm. when you have vehicles following you quite closely behind. Yeah. You know, as a learner driver, they might feel that added pressure. Yep. Uh, what would you say to your learners when you do get someone like that that's sort of tailgating? After you know? 200 yards, cross the roundabout. Uh, he's off a little first bit. Exit, a he's not in the mirrors. A don't lose your call. That's the road. Sorry, let that carry on. Yeah, don't lose your call. Yeah, do not lose cross your call. the roundabout and take the first exit. That's how you build up uh, stress and anxiety and everything, right? Yeah, and that's not that's why. Help. Yeah, it's, it's not going to help because you're just going to get very tense. And if the body gets tense, you know, it's not good. Yeah. So, it's a nice big blocker there, that bus, Love blocking that. all that traffic. What do I call it? <laughs> uh, you call them blockers as well, don't no, you? No, no, I call it the shield. I call it shield. All right. Okay. Hey guys, there's the shield. Where's your shield, guys? Yeah, so the shield, Mike, would you just add some information? Because there's probably a lot of viewers that don't understand what we mean by shield. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> at a roundabout, you're giving way to the right. When they're looking at their right, which is our shield, which then gives us the opportunity to emerge out, just like for you, the blocker, right? Yeah. Same principle. So, you're going to have to use that because the whole purpose of the roundabout is to keep the traffic flowing. That's why roundabouts are there. Go to keep right the traffic flowing. But if you keep on watching your right road. and you're not watching the oncoming vehicles, their right, how are you going to emerge out then? Especially when it's built up traffic. And then the worst case scenario is people are going to start horning at you because people are very impatient. Are they horny? Who? At you? No one's horning at you. <laughs> <laughs> no one's horning at you, mate. Sad. Good mirror work there. Ooh. Thank you. Yeah. Now, this is what I call a tunnel. It's a row of parked cars on both sides. Yeah. This is a common way to come back to the test center. If there's another vehicle already coming through the tunnel of the parked cars, we have to wait at the entrance Absolutely, to the tunnel. Yeah. Can't push ourselves through. Mm -hmm. One, we're joining a new road. They really have to, um, well, they have priority, although that's not written in the highway code. Okay? Who's that? The oncoming traffic? Well, you've got to take care when you enter yeah, into, yeah, a yeah, road, into a Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into a tunnel. Yeah, yeah. Look at the road way down the road. If you're going through it first, get yourself through it first. That's the way I say it. I mean, if you're filtering through first, oncoming traffic will stop further down the road. If they're coming through first, back off. Let them come through. There's no point you having the ego, I'm coming through first. Back off. Let that person through. That's All part it. of forward planning, isn't it? It's always forward planning. Right, what about these whip restrictions? Wow. How do we forward well, plan for these? Well, someone's stretched them out for us, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> Still got the pavement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So do it dead slow. Reference points, dead slow. Dead slow. Uh, very, this. very important that you practice this. What do I say about your car, Scott? Don't you really like it? You want to go buy one? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> the fact is, right, when a pupil goes out there and buys their own car, they oh, don't have the fancy toys. Oh, go again. Turn right. That was an easy route, wasn't it? Yep. I, I just well, didn't like the width restriction there. Yeah, I don't know about easy, but it's... Um, yeah, well, we made it look easy. Yeah. Sorry to say that. It, sorry, yeah, it is, it is true. Because, um, you know, I did... I taught at Greenford for probably about four years on wow. the trot. Wow. Uh, I really like the examiners there. Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, Rosewood Avenue, then turn right. It was so much for people to take in. They had to do so many lessons. Go left on the um, roundabout. It is, it's a tough, it's a tough exit, thing. But don't forget, turn right. you're investing in yourself. You're, listen, this is no, the cheapest part. This is what I mean. Scott always discuss about these things. 
pupils assume that the cheap the, the most expensive part is your lessons it's not is the most cheap that is the cheapest part think about when you've got to go and buy a car the insurance the maintenance that's the killer so if you haven't no if you can't afford to pay for lessons don't do lessons do you agree Scott uh, one thing that I want to add to that though as well is when you're doing lessons mm. a, a good way of knowing after um, 80 yards turn right Robin Hood way this then is following you have the road your destination yeah. on your left okay so I'm not going straight turn ahead right, following the road you have reached your destination on your left people get too close to these parked cars right, and right, end up right, right. looking in here and hitting the parked yeah. cars and failing Okay, this was the turn where the student failed for steering one-handed. Um, now, when you're doing your lessons, are you are you getting your money's worth? We are here to give you value. And another place where we are here is back at the driving test center. Perfect. Yeah? Well done. All right, please like, comment, and subscribe as um, we need the most amount of help on this channel as possible because we're tiny little fish in a big ocean of sharks. <laughs> we want to be a shark. All right, so if you could help us out with that, leave a comment down below. Any suggestions, any videos, topics you want us to do or cover, um, anything you didn't like, please let us know about so that we can make it better for your viewing. And that's it, really. So see you on the next video. Bye.